Hey everyone, uh, welcome to TWC TV. It is Thursday, April 23rd. Here we are back again for episode four of our weekly live stream show. So I'm Stephen Mark Baudouin. I'm executive director of the Washington Chorus. And the Washington Chorus, TWC, is producing this weekly show, TWC TV, to celebrate the joy and the art of singing together, to create community, create connections, foster creativity, uh, especially at this time when there's uh, so much uncertainty, uh, there is uh, so much happening in our world. So we want to give you every week, every Thursday, a chance to come together, uh, listen, learn, have a little bit of fun. And uh, it's hard to believe we're here on episode four, and we have two terrific guests for you today. Uh, Catherine Dehoney, she is the CEO of Chorus America, which is the national service organization for choirs of all sizes and types. Catherine will be joining us today on TWC TV, and we will also be joined by David Murray. David is the second trombone of our beloved National Symphony Orchestra. The National Symphony is uh, one of our premier orchestras in the United States, and they are in residence at the Kennedy Center. Frequent collaborators of the National, uh, frequent collaborators of the of the Washington Chorus. Uh, we love any chance to perform and collaborate with our friends at the National Symphony. So David Murray, who is second trombone with the NSO, will be with us. And before we get to our guests. Uh, so much has happened in the last week. I don't, I don't know about you, but but every day feels kind of like a month right now. <laughs> and uh, as as all of us at the Washington Chorus uh, think and and talk and and not only to each other but to other folks in music, in education, uh, in choral music, really trying to find a way forward and and not only recognizing the difficulty of this moment but trying to find ways to creatively evolve and creative evolution is really one of our themes today and in a time where uh, we seem to keep talking about and hearing that we can't go back to before whatever before meant uh, we have to find uh, a new way forward or a new normal we're a lot of conversations about what is this new normal and both, both of our guests, David and Catherine, are gonna talk about what, what they see, some examples they see of creative evolution, what, what would a new normal look like for a chorus or an orchestra? Um, how, how might people be consuming music or engaging with music differently? Uh, so we, you know, artists have always found a way forward, whatever the circumstances. And so I am very interested to hear from David and Catherine, some of what they know, what they're hearing about what's happening in the field today. So without uh, wasting a moment more, let us bring on our first guest. She is the CEO of Chorus America. Uh, she is also, I learned recently, somewhat of a jazz chanteuse, and perhaps she'll tell us a bit about that. <laughs> Please welcome to TWC TV, Catherine Dahoney. Catherine, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Oh boy, there goes my choral music credibility right out the door. <laughs> no, I, I think your stock increased. It means that you have a, a worldly perspective. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much. And thanks for letting me be here. Oh, we're thrilled to have you. So, uh, you know, I, I gave just a little introduction about Chorus America. Sure. You know, I, Chorus America is kind of, you know, it's, it, it is the convener of all choirs in the United States. It, it brings us all together. To, to learn, to advance our field. Um, what's something, for folks that might not be familiar with Chorus America, what, what is something about, about your mission or, or your work sure. that people might not know? Yeah, so Chorus America, well, gosh, we have been around more than 40 years and we are an association in uh, based here in D.C., the capital of associations, as it turns out, but we're something different. We serve uh, primarily um, choral music organizations of all kinds. Most of our members tend to be in the nonprofit chorus space, but we're the advocacy, research, and leadership development 
organization for choruses. And we do programming in all of those three areas. Uh, I think we're known probably for our research in the social and civic attributes of choruses and choral singers. Uh, we're probably the only group that's ever looked at that. And um, and it's been a very important piece of research, I think, especially now when choruses are all about community and connection. And the research certainly backs that up. That's amazing. Community and connection. Those, mm -hmm. those words are so, especially now, more important than ever. Absolutely. Um, and and as, as you talk about the work of Chorus America, one of, the, one of the ways that I know Chorus America is an organization and one of the best services of many great services that Chorus America provides is a chance to foster connection from choirs of all sizes and types. And one of the ways that you do that is in your annual conference. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you had that coming up, had maybe have that coming up. It was to have been in Miami. Tell us what's happening with your annual conference now. Yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, we, like many, have had to cancel our Miami conference. We typically, Chorus America has an annual conference. This is brings... going to be on the beach, right? <laughs> there were going to be mojitos involved, but I see. Um, we definitely are not going to meet in person, unfortunately. Uh, but that it's... won't stop the mojitos for those who would yeah. like them. Yeah. It will not, exactly. We've got other ways, but yeah. uh, we are turning uh, the conference into a virtual event. It'll be that same week in June, June fifteenth to nineteenth, or across five days, uh, and to try to bring to the field together around learning, connection, and of course celebrating our art form. So mm. those principles will not change. We have a lot of content that'll be delivered virtually and uh, there are gonna be networking opportunities, even online, uh, lots of uh, Zoom presentations, interactive conversations with nationally known uh, experts really in what's going on in arts, the arts administration world and uh, how choruses can think about this very strange uh, new environment we're all going to be going into uh, certainly through next season. Yeah. Well, I, um, you know, I, I was just reading here this might look familiar to you. I was it's reading this a magazine. It's a, this is a magazine. This it's is this the Chorus America magazine? It is. I was. I don't, how did this get in my hands today? I was. I was just flipping through this magazine, uh, reading about a little bit about the conference coming up, and I know you're working to evolve that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I have to say, by the way, I, I flipped through and was astonished to see, by the way, in the, the inside back cover, just this this beautiful. Oh, yes. <laughs> Full page ad. That's 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 quite something. Isn't that? Isn't that? We're so excited for you all. Uh, Eugene Rogers is one of our board members and just an amazing human. And I'm so excited for what he's going to do for uh, the Washington Chorus and for the whole, um, you know, the Washington D.C. choral community. He's fantastic. Oh well, that Catherine, thank you. We're we're thrilled to have Eugene uh, uh, be joining us very soon. And. Uh, a lot more to say about that, certainly, but I, I do want to ask you a little bit about about um, evolution. So, uh, you know, you really have your finger on the pulse as to what's happening nationally, talking to choirs of all types, children's choirs, symphonic choirs, school groups, community groups, professional groups. Um, and, and all of us ultimately, I think, have a lot of the same challenges, which are really the same opportunities. So. Mm -hmm. I, I, have you heard or seen a few examples out in the field of, of some ways that choirs are, are, are thinking creatively about the ways they need to evolve, especially at this time? Oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's still early days for, uh, I would say, for next season and how courses are going to adopt and adapt. Um, I have heard... Uh, particularly from our larger budget choruses, um, like the Washington Chorus, that there's a lot of scenario planning. People are trying very mm -hmm. hard to create seasons that are kind of compartmentalized. Um, maybe that's not quite the right word, but that 
if things change, uh, especially if we're in a situation where um, there'll be um, shelter in place orders off and on in response to maybe a resurgence of the virus, should we all be able to come back out mm. <laughs> this summer and in the fall, but maybe have to go back in? Um, how can choruses be flexible in planning their season so that not being able to do one round of concerts mm. isn't going to sink them? Right. Um, that kind mm. of thing. I I think the choruses, and, and I'm hearing this from uh, in all aspects of the performing arts, that the choruses now that are having to do so much virtually are that are really focusing on community and connection and trying to broaden who they're serving and reaching out to folks now when we're sort of hamstrung by not being able to do what choruses do best, which is singing together in person. Um, but thinking creatively about ways you can, the chorus can show up in the community in areas maybe they weren't in before, um, mm. addressing some of the issues that we're seeing in very sharp relief right now. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in a better place going mm -hmm. forward, no matter how they're going to have to slice and dice concerts and groups of people and audiences uh, to accommodate for um, the limitations the virus will put on all of us until there's a vaccine. Mm. Yeah, that, that that is such an important note to, for all of us, I think, to, to continue to hold on to when I hear you talk about the importance now and always, but perhaps more than ever now, of, of building and sustaining authentic community relationships yeah. and uh, with, with whomever, however a chorus defines their community, the community that, uh, that they're part of, that they work with. Um, it's so important to continue to steward those relationships, and uh, so many things. So many things to say, Catherine. I, I want to say first of all, I am very much looking forward to the virtual conference. Yes, uh, I meant to say, some Washington Chorus has a couple special people involved. This in is true. We do. Yes, we are. We are doing some presentations. Kara Morrissey and uh, Alicia Lee are doing a presentation on. Uh, centering equity and inclusion in your artistic director search, mm -hmm. uh, or in any search process for that matter. And I'm doing a short segment on uh, financial performance for, for organizations. But I, I think it's terrific that you've moved quickly to move that online. Um, and and I just have to say, all of us in the field appreciate so much the leadership that you and your amazing team, you really have a fantastic staff, have a fantastic uh, do, staff. do always to continue to advance our field. And I would just maybe leave with this one question. Uh, is there a particular piece of music, it can be choral or otherwise, that when you th that really gives you hope that that you hold on to in a hopeful way at this time? Oh, we may have, oh, there she is. Yeah, this is live television. Anything yeah. can happen. Anything can happen, that was scary. <laughs> so is there a particular um, piece of music that music. gives you hope? Yeah. Oh, heavens, there's so many. Um, you know, I've really been enjoying um, Sean Kirchner's uh, playing on uh, his YouTube videos that he's been going back into some hymns, some old hymns and performing them beautifully. And um, Conspirare, some of the things Conspirare is putting out because uh, Craig Heller Johnson is just so grounded in spirituality and hope that <laughs> those have been wonderful. And, uh, and, and as you know, Stephen, because I told you this, that I certainly find, um, I try to swing the blues away as much as I possibly can <laughs> listening to Excellent. It. Excellent. <laughs> listening whatever, to whatever it takes for each of us to continue to, to foster creativity in this time, that's, that's so important. Well, Catherine Dahoney, thank you so much for joining us yeah. on TWC TV today. Thank you for all you do for the field and, and for choral music and beyond. And uh, I look forward to seeing you and, and hundreds of other folks online in the conference Absolutely. in June. Yes. And thank you again so much. And I appreciate uh, the Washington Chorus and all it does so much. And thank you very much. Thank you, Catherine. We'll talk again soon. Bye. Okay. Catherine Dahoney, CEO of Chorus America. Uh, and a terrific friend to the Washington Chorus and, a, and obviously a terrific friend to all choirs everywhere. And um, gosh, that has me thinking about so many things. And, and uh, I'm so glad that Catherine shared a bit about the, the music that she holds on to for hope at a time like this.
And it actually is a kind of a perfect segue to our next segment, which is our TWC throwback wayback clip. So every week we bring you something from the TWC archives, 59 years of live performances, tour performances, recordings uh, for um, a special way back throwback clip. And this one uh, actually had had a few folks had requested this one in particular, and I'm so glad that you did, those of you who did, because it's a favorite for me as well. So the, the throwback way back clip today is a performance of a beloved Maurice Dorflay uh, setting of uh, Ubi Caritas. So Dorflay, who's a, a lauded uh, composer and organist and has written some of the most extraordinary choral music, especially of the 20th century. And uh, many of us know and love, of course, uh, the Requiem of Maurice Dorflay, but, but he wrote a, a series of pieces using uh, ancient plain chant as the basis for his own kind of compositional flourishes. Maybe flourishes is not the right word, his own sort of compositional uh, exploration. Uh, and, and this set of four pieces, the uh, Ubi Caritas, is a, a much beloved piece. Uh, I, I won't read the whole translation to you. You can certainly find the translation from Latin online. Uh, but, but the Ubi Caritas is just a terrifically beautiful, simple, elegant setting by Dora Flay uh, based on this plain chant. You'll hear the chant. It's Ubi Caritas et amor Deus ibi est. So you'll hear that in the, I think it's in the Sopranos uh, throughout this piece. Um, this is a performance by the Washington Chorus. I just put these pieces together. I was texting with one of our members, Allison Coombs. Shout out to Allison, thank you. Performance by the Washington Chorus on July 10th of 2000. They were in Florence, Italy at the Basilica San Lorenzo. So the Washington Chorus under then artistic director, Bob Schaefer, July of 2000 in Maurice Dorifle's Ubi Caritas. About that piece, the uh, Ubi Caritas setting by Maurice Dorfle, performed by the Washington Chorus in 2000 in Florence, Italy, under then artistic director Bob Schaefer. Just so beautiful. 
Huh. Okay. So uh, there is a one more guest that we have today, who is not a singer himself. He uh, holds a special place in my heart uh, for many reasons, uh, including especially the fact that he is a trombone player. And trombone was my first instrument way back uh, before I began singing. And I really think it was through playing trombone that I actually found, discovered my own singing voice. So uh, to join us now, sure. Um, he's going to join us in just a second. Uh, and his name is David Murray. David is a second trombone player with the National Symphony Orchestra. And he's been with the NSO, I think, for over a decade uh, as a trombone player. And uh, he is a, a terrific friend to TWC because in addition to playing with the National Symphony, he's also an orchestra contractor. So part of what David does is he uh, hires and brings together professional musicians from across DC to um, collaborate with the Washington Chorus, collaborate with other terrific organizations uh, in DC and in the uh, uh, DC metro area by hiring some of the best musicians, whether they're from the National Symphony or elsewise. Uh, and so David is a, a, a terrific friend to the chorus. And uh, uh, David Graydon, do we have him with us? Well, then please welcome to TWC TV, David Murray. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, David, it's great to see you. Good to see you too, Stephen. Oh. How is quarantine life treating you? Um, gotten to know basically every corner of our house now, you know, <laughs> um, you know, lots of individual practice, um, lots of um, walks around our Brooklyn neighborhood here, keeping our social distance and um, lots of new recipes to explore in the kitchen. So <laughs> all in all, okay, yeah. Excellent. Well, I was, as, as you may have heard in my introduction, I was introducing you as a, as a trombone player, obviously in your terrific work as a second trombone with the National Symphony. And, and by the way, I just have to say, for those of you that have not had a chance to hear the National Symphony, maybe ever, or especially in the last few years, under maestro John Andrea Nazeda, you all are sounding better than ever. Just terrific. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a incredible time, you know, to be with the NSO, um, to have such a galvanizing artistic vision from the podium, um, to have a lot of belief um, amongst our um, NSO musicians about the uh, product that we create every week, um, and to have um, a really um, strong, believing, supportive, um, management and um, a particularly board um, who, you know, uh, encapsulate this four-pronged process of, of what an orchestra does on stage. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it, it's not trite to say it's a blessing to be here right now, for mm, sure. Yeah. Very exciting time. Sure. And an exciting time and a, and a time filled with a lot of possibility and the possibilities of the unknown, right? The unknown of uh, how long all of this moment may last, the unknown of uh, uh, how folks may engage with music, how they may consume music in the future. And I, I talked with Catherine a bit uh, about some of her ideas about creative evolution and, and um, obviously would love to hear some of your thoughts as well as an, as an orchestra member, as one that is uh, hiring folks to come together and collaborate with choruses. What are some of the ways that either you or or the NSO um, are thinking about creative evolution and, and how orchestras and musical organizations may need to evolve at this moment? Yeah, it's a it's a good question, you know, and um, I I think it was um, uh, Catherine said in her uh, segment something that the answer is still evolving for all of us, no, and um, I think that's the NSO is is no stranger to that feeling too. You know, uh, I think all of us as artists have come to realize very um, acutely that performing human to human with that kind of connection is enormously powerful. And mm. it's not just powerful, but it is literally something that flows within us mm. um, during this time when we don't have the opportunity to do that, um, that 
there's a void. There's a void there. And to your question, then, how is that void going to be filled in some meaningful way? Because, you know, for, you know, the time that we're in now that, yeah, we, we have a, a, a waiting game to play, you know, um, till life can come back to normal. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's going to be something exciting that the uh, National Symphony can do, you know, in cooperation with the Kennedy Center at large to uh, reach um, not just what would we would say would be the core audiences who know of the Kennedy Center and, you know, who live in the Washington area and love to come see us play Beethoven and Mahler and Mozart and Sibelius, um, or those who would go to Hamilton or something mm -hmm. like that. But to say, okay, all of these artists, whether it's the Hamilton cast or it's, you know, the members of the National Symphony are all at home um, with their hearts and passion wanting to give. And what sort of digital platforms, what sort of um, connections through the internet um, can be created? It can be created and fostered through, you know, a meaningful um, um, relationship with uh, not only, like I said, our core audience, but also um, audiences internationally. You know, the, the NSO does go on international tours. We were supposed to go on one to Japan and China, mm -hmm. which was uh, canceled, mm -hmm. obviously. But, um, you know, who's to say now that we still can't engage with the audiences in China or in Japan or in Europe or on any continent for that matter, you know, and to bring a, a really strong sense of uh, meaning and relevance um, to the world at large. I think it's, a, you know, it's, it's such an, uh, an untapped resource that, you know, it's, it's sort of curious to see where um, our adventures will take us. Yeah. Well, I love that idea of, you know, although I, I shared in your sadness, we really, our hearts went out to you uh, about the, the tours being canceled. Uh, and and I, I know that all of us look forward to the day when the NSO, when TWC and all of us can be not only in the halls, but but out in front of folks across the globe. But, but to your point that it doesn't stop us from finding ways, virtual platforms to, to make these global connections and and something interesting that you have done, uh, and that you've done it with your partner, Elise, who is a violinist, is uh, finding some local connections as well. And, yeah. and I, I think uh, we're going to play a clip. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what we're about to see? Okay. So, um, you know, Elise and I, she's a violinist um, in, in the Washington area, has a, has a teaching studio here in Brooklyn, where we live. Um, and... Uh, we both live very busy lives as musicians, particularly her, who who does a lot of traveling for her, you know, um, uh, profession. And um, we really have never played together duets or anything like that. And and a lot of people think they'll say, "Oh, two professional musicians. Oh, they all they do is they go, you know, open a bottle of wine and and you know play <laughs> duets till the, the the bottle's done." You know, especially um, in that extensive repertoire written for violin and trombone, right? Well, yeah, and that's that's you know a prohibiting factor for sure. But you know, the the interesting thing is that. Uh, at a certain point we say, well, why don't we, you know, we miss making chamber music. We miss playing with other people. Let's play with one another, you know? So what are we about to see? And so what we did was we did a, a concert um, for our, the neighbors on our block. And oh, that's um, terrific. A, a melange of pieces from Baroque to, you know, uh, Baby Shark. This one <laughs> is um, a little clip of um, uh, Leonard Cohen's Alleluia. Terrific. Let's,
Yeah. I love that. Now, was it was it your idea that that uh, you're bringing out your partner who's a violinist and you're actually not allowing her to play with her bow? Was that your idea? Well, you know, we had to have some sort of artistic interest, right? And <laughs> and that meant that the trombone got to even play a melody, let alone, you know, just be a part of a concert anyway. So this is, this is true. Yeah. So, you know, we, we played it through, you know, she played the melody and then you said, well, okay, maybe this is a good one for the trombone. Um, and then she played some arpeggios, some broken up chords be underneath. And um, I said, well, okay, this is cool, but maybe we could make it a little bit more folk country, quasi mandolin in a way. If you know, instead of the bow, that she plays it like a you know, like a mandolin would be, and and the, I loved it. The secret, the secret that you really can't see, and the brilliance that Elise was able to to work under the circumstances is that we had no pick in the house in, in, on which to play. So she's actually strumming her violin with a little toy um, dinosaur with wow. the, with the tail. That so you know. <laughs> um, that's resourceful the of creative evolution right there, by the way. Exactly. Didn't work so well for the dinosaurs, but it works well for our music making. Yeah. Now, is she there in the house, by the way? I, I think she is somewhere. Would she come Would say she hello say to hi? us? Okay. Yeah, she's she, she's going to uh, find our third family member here in Who a little bit. Who is that? Bit. Our third family member is is the cat that I've had ever since she was a, um, a wee thing. And her name is Flughafen. Flughafen, um, which means? Which is a German for airport. Oh, so yeah, it's it's always oh, the interesting. Cat named airport as one. Yeah, of it's always interesting when you go to the vet. Yeah, I always know what they're calling you because they look at the chart and they go, um, is that, yeah, that's yeah. that's us. So, so is, she, is she making a cameo for us then? <laughs> <laughs> you you had to do it, didn't you, Stephen? I yeah. I did okay, have to do it. I did have to do it. Say hi. So this is Lisa and Flughafen. Hello. Flughafen. You can't see her. Yeah. There she is. Oh, and what what is Flughafen's uh, instrument? Uh, uh, Flughafen um, plays the opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a cat would. Uh, would, would. There's nothing else to do. There's nothing you know. else to do. Yeah. <laughs> <That's terrific. laughs> For a cat. Yeah. Uh, I I love I love the whole concept of the neighborhood back porch concert. I love yeah. that. And, and yeah, you know, it was it was something that sort of came to us and, and we reached out, you know, through our, our block text thread and, and just said, hey, we're thinking about doing this, you know, come, you know, in the in the back alley and please keep your distance and wear your masks or whatever you do. But we're going to play music. That's great. And, and, you know, some some people just open up their windows and, and listen from the back and some people you know, came and brought a chair or, you know, a little glass of wine or something and, and uh, hmm. uh, made a thing. I, I, I think it, it showed just how impactful the, the act of communicating music is uh, hmm. because this, this seemingly small act of a, a 20 minutes or so, you know, do a concert with a dinosaur pick, um, you know, resonated not only with with us just finally having this catharsis of playing for another group of humans again but also for them to to you know engage in a way that you know humanizes everything you know in such a way we're we're playing in front of my you know bmw and and you know whatever pieces we put together and there's no formality to it mm. um and somehow or another it, that that brings it, 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 more intimacy, I think, to the moment. Yeah. Well, we, we have the benefit, uh, since you are, are there, speaking of intimate moments, of, of you being there and your instrument even being right off camera. Yeah, over yeah we're in the, the little back practice space here. So I, I love that. So typically with guests, David, we would try to put you through your paces through a, a, a quiz gauntlet that we call Quizcendo, but we're taking <laughs> a week off of Quizcendo this week. I'm not going to put you through that gauntlet. Uh -huh. But I wonder if you would be willing to give us maybe a couple of bars or something that we can use as a quiz for our audience. Oh, okay. Would you be game for that? To play something. To play something, yeah. And, and um, the, the game would be 
that audience members would uh, email us at info at the with uh, what what is the name of the composer and the work from that, that you're about to play. That sure. is the thing. And and the, the prize is extraordinary, David. The prize is a TWC uh, magnet. That is the prize. Ooh. Ooh. Right? That's, yeah, that, that sounds good. Priceless. Yeah. Priceless. So. <laughs> you, there are some things, you know, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it'll show up on Antiques Roadshow one day and be $80,000. So. Signed by David Murray. That's right. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so uh, David, could you give us a, a few, don't even tell us what it is, just surprise us. Okay, I'll have. Okay, let me see. Um, let me see what I can do. Okay. Yeah. David Murray. <laughs> That last note kind of got you. Uh, I think it was the buffering, actually. It the <laughs> yeah, I blame I blame the connection. It, it was absolutely the buffering. That's right. They yeah, worry. right. So, so that is the thing. So audience members at home, uh, you heard that terrific excerpt from David Murray trombone. Now it's your turn to tell us what was the composer, what was the name of the work uh, uh, from that excerpt. Uh, email us, info at the WashingtonCores.org. All of the winning entries will be mailed uh, a, a TWC magnet. Uh, this is a limited edition uh, specialty that you can have waiting for you in the mail, thanks to David Murray. Yeah. Um, David, that was terrific. So who knows what the future may hold, right? Who knows how long we'll be in this thing together? Uh, what is one thing that gives you hope as a musician right now? Um, it's a good question. <laughs> Um, I actually, I, I think, you know, sort of segueing off of this little duo concert that we did, um, the other day, um, what gives me hope is that what, what we do as, as musicians, as performing artists, um, is vital. It mm -hmm. is a part of human existence, you know, it, it, this, we saw a little microcosm of it, but the the idea being that you know once we all can come together once we all are allowed to come together that the, the art of music making or opera or choir or chamber music orchestra solo concert i th i hope i really hope that there will be a, a renewed vigor for you know, people understanding why this is important you know i mean you there are some things that you can't necessarily put a, a quantifiable value on it. You know, it's that je ne sais quoi or whatever, but that is the thing that you see people are missing. They're lacking in, you know, in this particular time. And, and I hope at, after this period has passed that, you know, people will realize why live music is so important and why, you know, um, why great art still exists after all these years because it connects in some sort of primal n deep need fulfilling way and mm. you know i think we will all look forward to the opportunity to not only hear it again but also to play it too mm. yeah well a absolutely and and you know all of us at the washington chorus miss that as much as you miss that uh, as much as all of our friends at the National Symphony and Kennedy Center, Washington National Opera, <clears throat> we we all miss that. And we we I just have to say we at TWC treasure the relationship we have with with you and with all of our friends at the National Symphony. We can we consider you friends. Uh, yeah, and, and vice vice versa. You know, it's all it's you. always such a, a, a an exciting uh, project whenever the, the choir is with us. You know, there's a, a, an amazing um, energy vitality you know, to TWC that, that um, it really, it, it, there's such energy to, to the choir. It's, it's always a, th a thrill to, to play with you. Yeah. Thank you. And, and even when we're doing pieces that uh, like the, I was thinking of the, the Lyra Auerbach Arctica work right. last year. I mean, that yeah. was a wild adventure 
you know, right. ice blocks and IV yeah. drips and singing in Inuit and uh, sure. You know, sure. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I, th I think, you know, it's it's it, it, again, like the, the idea of adventure, you know, mm -hmm. that that you you have a, a group, an orchestra or a choir or the combination thereof who says, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. You know, let's let's do something unique and challenging and um, let's let's challenge ourselves and and, you know, make ourselves vulnerable on stage you know, um, is that's, that's the thrill of, of continuing, you know, to, to play, um, not only, you know, new music, of course, but, but just, you know, music in general, the, the thrill of, of the moment. Yeah. Well, we, we can't wait to experience that again with all of you, whenever the world allows us to do it. Uh, we appreciate David, the many ways that we get to work with you, you know, through the NSO and through your work as a, a contractor, helping to bring terrific musicians into the TWC community. Right. Uh, yeah. Thank you for being with us today on TWC TV and also for bringing Elise and, and little Flughafen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where they went, That's but all I'm, right. I'm... They, they, they had their cameo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twice. Just good. Say it twice. good, good, good. <laughs> David, thank you for being here. Thank you for all you do. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on stage as soon as is possible. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye bye now. David Murray, uh, second trombone with the National Symphony Orchestra. Uh, obviously, as you can see, not only a great musician, but, but what a wonderful person. Uh, so thank you, David, for being with us. Uh, thank you, Elise and, and Flughafen for that, that uh, little visit there. Thank you, Catherine Dahoney, for joining us from Chorus America. A lot to think about in terms of you know, creative evolution, a lot of unknowns, uh, so, so, so much to consider in that space. And, and um, speaking of unknowns, uh, a couple of things we want to share with you as we bring episode four to a close today. So one of the things that's unknown for us as Washington Chorus is the future of UCTV. So we launched this. Uh, four weeks ago now, with uh, uh, an aim of finding a platform to bring people together, celebrate the art and joy of singing. Uh, and we have already had so much fun with you, and we love hearing from you all back on this program. And please keep it coming. All of your, your thoughts, your feedback about what you're enjoying, what you want to see more of, that is so important to us. Uh, we are viewing this as a pilot project, you know, like a little pilot TV show. Uh, and we're planning five episodes in this pilot. So episode four today means that we are four fifths of the way through our pilot. So we have just one more episode left in this pilot. Now that doesn't mean necessarily that TWC TV is going away completely after that. Uh, but we do wanna make sure that we have a chance after we do five episodes to hear your feedback, uh, to really assess uh, uh, how things went, to talk to our colleagues and partner musical organizations and then see, see what ways there might be forward, especially finding more collective uh, ways to, to, to share the stories and the music that we want to share with you. So, uh, so we've got one more episode still to come. And I, I can't tell you how excited I am to tell you about this next episode, which will be the last in our pilot. So next week, on Thursday, April 30th, we're doing something pretty unprecedented. And I have to tell you, I'm pretty excited about this. You will want to join us Thursday, April 30th at five o'clock because we have four guests on TWC TV. And these are four guests that have never been in the same room together, to my knowledge, uh, and certainly never been on the same show in the same virtual environment together. And here's who these four guests are they are Bob Schaefer. Artistic Director of the Washington Chorus for, I think, just over 30 years. And you heard an excerpt uh, from Bob's tenure with TWC earlier in today's episode. Bob Schaefer will be with us on next week's TWC TV. Bob is a legend in our field, a legend in TWC, TWC's community, uh, Grammy, multiple Grammy Award winning conductor. And uh, we are so thrilled to be joining us on TWC TV. And following Bob will be Julian Walkner. Julian Walkner, who is our artistic director at the Washington Chorus from 2007 to 2017. Julian Walkner will be with us next week on TWC TV. Following Julian will be our current artistic director, Christopher Bell. 
who has been with us for three terrific seasons and is with us for a, a few months more, wrapping up his current season. Uh, and then uh, to, to top it off, our incoming artistic director, Eugene Rogers, will be with us. So, ladies and gentlemen, every single TWC artistic director from the last 40 years will be with us on one show. On one show. I can't believe it. It's going to be pretty amazing. And to have Bob and Julian and Christopher and Eugene on one episode together, talking, uh, interviewing each other, talking about music, sharing memories. Uh, it's, it's just going to be a really terrific special moment for us. So please plan to join us next Thursday, April 30th, 5 o'clock, TWC Artistic Directors, past, present, and future. It's going to be a hell of a show. Um, special thank you to everyone who helps to make TWC TV possible, to our producer, David Graydon, to our terrific uh, production team, especially to Bobby Schroyer, Director of Production and Community at TWC, to everyone who makes things possible. Thank you so much for tuning in to TWC TV today. We cannot wait to see you next Thursday for one, one heck of a finale to the pilot uh, with TWC Artistic Directors Bob Schaefer, Julian Walker. Christopher Rubel and Eugene Rogers. We'll see you then. Thank you.